Psalm 119. We're going to start in verse 169. How many of you know this is the last phase, the last portion of this? Whether I'll get it done tonight, I don't know. So let's just wait and see. It might We might stretch it out one more week, but we'll see about that here as we get into this. And um, But we're going to start off in verse 169. We're going to read through 176. And I love at the end of this how it all comes together. You know, we've talked about so many different um, areas where God just ministers into us, giving us the ability to handle things. How many of you know we, we, need, we need the strength to stand? You know, a lot of what's going to be talked about tonight is, and I've titled it this, at your roll call, God, I'm always present. In other words, when I was in the military, how many of you know we had a roll call? And we'd all have to line up, stand in attention, and then they would call the roll, and everybody had to answer. We couldn't say here. We had to say present. Because I think somebody can kind of go, Hur, and you not be there. I think they thought present was a little bit harder for people to mimic your voice or whatever. So how many of you will say this, I am present. present. Come on, y'all, I am present for God. And this is what we're talking about. You know, when, when, when God speaks and his word is released, um, he always has a remnant that hears. How many of you know, I want to be one of those people who are obedient to hear, hear quickly, obey quickly, but also um, I know his voice, so I want to be able to respond right to things that are not of him. Does that make sense? Because, you know, sometimes, you know, we, I, I can respond in such a way, I'm, I'm quick-witted, so I can respond in such a way to where um, it may not be the best for people. You know, even though I make the point, you know, I, I mean, it wasn't too long ago, I, somebody asked me a question, I said something to them, and then when I, I got home the next day, my head started. How many of you ever, ever had you? It's like a weed eater. You crank it, you know, and... It cranks itself, and then all of a sudden, you just start hearing, you know, you, you weren't really coothful when you, ee, 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 ee. you weren't really coothful when you said that, I hope, you know, and then it just went on and on, and, you know, and finally, I, I went to my wife, and I, I talked to her, and I said, look, I said, my mind is just really beating me up over what I said. How, how many of you know we need to know God, know God good enough to be able to stop the voices that we don't need to let speak into our lives, but do it in a right way? Can you say amen to that? How many of you know, do it in a way the where, where we, can, we can get the point across, but yet not slap them? Does that make sense to everybody? Amen. I know you think sometimes it's more fun to smack them, but it creates more of a problem later, especially when you're in jail calling me to get you out. All right, let's, let's go into Psalm 119, starting in verse 169. Let my cry come right into your presence. Will you say amen to that? You know, guys, I'm going to comment on this as we go to, but then go back into parts of it like I, I have been doing. Um, you know, it, it's, I've heard people say this before, man, whenever I pray, I just feel like my prayers hit the ceiling. How many of you can honestly say you've had that happen to you? You feel like when you pray, your prayers don't get through. Anybody ever feel that? I'm, I'm talking about how you feel. How many of you know that's not scriptural? Okay, because if God is all-knowing and God is everywhere, then your prayers don't have to get beyond the ceiling. Do you understand? All you got to do is voice them, God's aware of them, so the feelings that we have, maybe we'll deal with this a little bit more as we go. The feelings that we have sometimes can talk us out of faith, which is how we activate every promise that God has into our life. So, you know, uh, you know, let my cry come right into your presence, God. So undoubtedly, he was feeling the same way. God, I don't want to just pray a prayer to pray a prayer. I don't want to say something just to say something. You know, I remember hearing a story years ago, and whether you'll get this or not, I don't know, but they, they you know, in, in the church service, you know, we're supposed to, there, there's, there's um, limits set on how many words and, and you know what I'm saying, and, and messages and tongues, interpretations should come forth, you know, and we try to follow some of that. Well, they, this guy was telling about how they had a meeting one time, and they had had the interpretations, and this one woman, she just got so caught up in the spirit, she gave this message in tongues, and everybody waited for the interpretation, and it didn't come. You know, and finally she looked around, and she said, the same thing they said. How many of you know that's not, that's not the kind of words we want to be giving, you know. It's not the kind of prayers we want to be praying. We just don't want to be throwing things out there just because we're caught up in uh, the essence of what's going on right now. How many of you know we need to know what we're saying? Now listen to this. It says, I, I like... Let my cry come right into your presence, God. Provide me with the insight 
that comes only from your word. So if we're going to pray, we have to understand that God hears. Come on, y'all. So if God hears, then he has to be working. So this is a question to you. What can limit your prayer from coming to pass? Think about it for just a minute. What limits your prayer? All right, let me, let me go into a few things. I know I, I'm off track right here, so, um, but this is what can happen. Sometimes we're praying things that aren't in the Word. We pray amiss. All right, sometimes, how many of you know, we have to pray and we believe. It's like this, guys. How many of you are believing for some of your family to be saved? Yeah. All right, how many of you know, you've got to understand by faith that God's working on doing that, but that person has a will, and God has to figure out how to get the right person around them. So sometimes, I'm just saying sometimes, God's working it out and working on behalf, and, and we get frustrated because we don't see it happen. You know, we had a couple come here, and they were believing for revival, and uh, we, you know, of course, I want revival. Hey, I told you it'd be all right with me if everybody would just fall in the floor and you know, and we drug out of here at Monday morning sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's okay with me, but I want it to be God. I don't want it to be me. Do you understand? I don't, want, I don't want people laying around looking. God, I hope somebody hurry up and get up so we can go home. Do you follow me? Well, you know, the, there was one time this, this person made a statement to me. It's just not happening fast enough, and he ended up leaving. Now, listen, the thing of it is, if you're going to pray something into being, stand until it bees. Come on, y'all, stand. And so sometimes, you know, there are things going on. Oh, y'all, don't get quiet on me. Come on, y'all, sometimes there are other things happening that we have no awareness of, but God does. So, so let's go this. He provides insight. Listen, it comes, only, it comes only from your word. Give my request your personal attention. We're going to talk about this in just a little bit. <clears throat> Rescue me on the terms of your promise. Will you highlight that, underline that, write that down, do something, make a note of that? Write it on your husband's forehead. Do something <laughs> right now. I'm just kidding, guys. Don't you do that? Some people would, wouldn't they? At least it'll be in front of me when he's home. Anyway, it says this, Rescue me on the terms of your promise. Listen to what it says. Let praise cascade out of, uh, off my lips. After all, you've taught me the truth about life. And let your promises ring true or, or ring from my tongue. In other words, I'm going to speak the truth. I'm going to speak the truth of your word. Every order you've given is right. Put your hand out and steady me since I've chosen to live by your counsel. I'm homesick, God, for your salvation. I love it when you show yourself. Boy, these are going to be some, this is why I don't know when I'm going to finish this thing tonight. These are, these are some good points. I love it when you show yourself. And look, invigorate my soul so I can praise you well. That word invigorate means give strength and energy to my soul. Think about that, y'all. Now, if your soul is energized, if your emotions, if your mindset is energized by the power of God, how many of you know you can outlast any trial that comes your way? Did you know that? If you have the right mindset... You can overcome anything that comes against you. And we'll, we'll see some of this as we, we go a little further. It says, invigorate my soul so I can praise you well. So uh, use your decrees to put iron in my soul. I love this, guys. You know, you, you ever met somebody and, and somebody will say, man, they, they're just, it's like they're made of steel. Have you ever, have you ever met anybody like that? They're so hard-headed, you couldn't drill a hole in their head carve a spot out and pour something into them did you know you know i mean it's just they're so i mean there's some people that are built like that yeah. this is not what this is talking about this is talking about god give me give me iron in my soul in other words make my soul be able to respond to the attacks that come against it in a way that's iron and i do not bend come on y'all it makes a big difference how we handle things okay um and it says, and should I wander off like lost sheep, seek me. I'll recognize the sound of your voice. You know, I, I was talking to someone the other day, and, and uh, they, were, they were asking me, and I'll share more about this, you know, as, as things go forward. But um, 
they were asking me, um, how do you deal with failure? How do you deal, how, how do you, if you, if you could talk to other pastors and you could tell them how to deal with failure, how, how would you, what would you tell them to do? And I made this comment. Thank God it wasn't on air at that point in time, but I made this comment. I said, um, I would tell them, fall into God's lap of mercy. Just lay in God's lap of mercy because he knows how to heal you and fix everything that you damage. Come on, y'all, just learn how to lay. You know, like a baby, you lay, you know, you lay a baby in your lap, just curl up in God's lap of mercy. You know, where his mercy can be renewed in your life. I mean, because we all blow it. I know. Look around, y'all. Look around. Look around. Everybody in here, at some point in time, some of y'all keep records of it. They blow it. All right? So what are you going to do with it? Well, you fall into his lap of mercy. Just make sure you, you learn how to do that. And then you're not, you're not just on the floor by yourself. All right? If you're in his lap of mercy, if, you're a, if, if you fall on him then you're going to come back strong. Do you understand? God has a way of healing and restoring and recovering and doing things in your life. All you got to do is give him the opportunity to do it. And if you learn how to lay right, hey, can I do it this way? If you land right, you don't have to worry about it, okay? God will, God will handle it. Don't, don't mean there won't be some mop up on aisle 13, but <laughs> God will know how to handle it, all right? Now, let, let's talk about the first part of this. My cry comes right into your presence um, we're going to talk a little bit about prayer tonight in this section because, you know, some of, the, some of the things with prayer is we are good, and when I say we, I'm talking about me and you. Okay, we are good at complaining, you know, prayer complaints. They're, we love to complain to God about what's not, not right. We love to, and, and I've always tried to challenge myself, guys, I don't want to just be, uh, I don't want God to be my complaint box. Does everybody understand? I mean, he's aware of my complaints. Do you understand? But I don't want my prayer time just to be a complain time. I, I don't want to go to his council just to complain about what everybody else is doing wrong. All right, I want to go into his council. I want to go into prayer time because I know there's something that God can do in me. And he can change me because every situation is going to be different for everybody so some of the biggest, some of my biggest prayers, guys, that I pray is, God, teach me how to handle this and, and let me handle it like you. Not like me, like you. Now, I'm not perfect at that, and, you know, nobody is, but I'm working that way. So when it comes to prayer time, how many of you know prayer is a two-way activity? We say, but we also supposed to hear. All right, we say, so we can pray, we can tell God, but we, you'll get more out of what, what prayer time means to you if you learn how to thank him for what he's already provided instead of complaining about what you hadn't got into your life because how many of you know provision's already been made? So a lot of times you come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give him. Come on, y'all, and give him. See? I mean, it makes a difference when you enter in the right way. All right, and if all you got is a complaint notepad, Okay, I'll get off of this one in a minute. So prayer is a two-way activity. It's, it's say and hear, say and hear. Prayer also activates. Will you say amen to that? Amen. How many of you know it can activate It can activate God's response to a certain thing? It can also activate angels. Guys, and I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm more aware lately of God's angels than I've ever been, working on our behalf, taking care of us. You know, if you look in the book of, I, I love to say it this way, so forgive me, the, the book of the Revelations, um, <laughs> if you look in Revelation, the book of Revelation, you'll see that angels are going to be active all through the book of Revelation. I mean, you're going you're to see it, and they're not going to be invisible. I mean, these, this is going to be very noticeable. People are not going to go, was that judgment? They're going to know that it's judgment. They're going to know these things, are, these things are taking place. So prayer activates. Listen to James 5 and verse 16. I'm going to read this in the, the King James and in the Amplified. So if you will turn there, I know it'll be up on the screen. So we say and we hear, we also activate things when we pray. You know, I'm going to share the story with you. I know I've shared it several times, but um, I was driving in, I want to say it was McCall, um, South Carolina. And back then, how many of you know, I remember when we just had AM radios. 
Anybody else remember, remember that where, you know, you had to push the button, you'd pull the button out and then push the button to stick the channel, and then it didn't work half the time because the rubber band in the thing would just get worn, and it, as you drove it, it would vibrate off the channel. Some of y'all don't even know the struggle. <laughs> but anyway, you know, and, and uh, or, you know, you got a cassette tape. I, I know y'all remember cassette tapes, and it eats half of it up before you realize, you know. Yeah, eight track was the same way where, you know, you, you uh, anyway. I was driving through this area, and there was a guy. He was on, on the radio station that I listened to preaching. And I don't know what denomination he was or, or anything like that, but he started preaching about, he, he started telling people, there is no hell. You don't have to worry about it. Um, don't you be concerned about hell. Nobody's going to go to hell because everything you've heard in church about hell is not true. You know, and he was preaching this stuff, and I'm in the truck yelling at this guy. You know what I'm, I'm, I'm telling him? Man, you need to shut up. You know what I'm saying? What in the world are you doing? You know, and oh, no, when you die, you're just going to go to sleep and close your eyes, and you're just going to be out of the loop. You don't have to worry about it anymore. And I'm thinking, man, oh, man. And I, I shared that, you know, this part. We went to, that was, I went that Tuesday night, and we had, we had an intercessory prayer. Now, where we did intercessory prayer at was at a couple's house in the church, and they had moved here from, from um, I forget where it was, in New York or somewhere, Pennsylvania, Ohio. So they thought in South Carolina they needed a wood burner. Okay, so they had this big wood burner in their living room. And when people would come to pray, everybody would get in there before me because y'all know I'm a talker. It happens, all right? And uh, they would get in there before me, so everybody would take all the seats away from the wood burner. The only seat left when, by the time I got in there was right by the wood burner. Oh. How many of you know? We don't get cold enough winters here, as far as I'm concerned, for a, for a buck stove. You know what I'm saying? And, and so we're in there, and we're praying, man, and I mean the sweat is pouring off of me. We pray, we're praying in the Spirit. We're interceding, and I, I just got caught up. I, I mean, I did. I got caught up in the Spirit. I don't know the sweating cause. I, I mean, I got caught up. And I'm telling you right now, I mean, I, I got sweat dripping, y'all. I'm telling you. And all of a sudden, it just bubbled up inside of me to um, pray over this guy that was preaching what he was preaching about hell. And I did. But when it came out, how many of you know it wasn't kookful like I was talking about? How many of you know intercession sometimes is not? Intercession cuts to the chase. I mean, it does. And, and, I, and I, I don't remember the exact wording, but it was something like this. Father, in the name of Jesus, that guy that's preaching that stuff right now and telling people they're not going, they're, there's not a hell and they're not going to go to hell, I bind his finances, first of all, let him get saved if he can get saved, but if not, I bind his finances so we'll go off the air and not preach that stuff anymore. How many of you know, the whole intercessor team got quiet. My dad-in-law was there, Richard King was there, and I saw him do this. <laughs> and I knew what he was thinking, we ain't putting him by that wood burner no more. He done prayed up a fire. You know, well, nobody said anything to me. As a matter of fact, that was the last prayer that was prayed. It kind of shut intercession down. I mean, you know, it just shut everything down. And I, I'm sure I'm going to get called in because, you know, I got called in all the time. I know Preacher King's going to say, hey, Rick, can you meet me over here at the office? We've got to discuss this. And, but it never happened, you know. I guess he sensed in the Spirit that it was the Holy Spirit or maybe he just didn't want to take it on at that point in time and... Guys, it wasn't a week or two later, I went back to McCall, and this guy comes on the air. I think it was just the next week. He comes on the air, and he says, guys, I can't explain it, but he said, my funding has dried up. He said, this is my last day on air. And I think Preacher King was wise not to say anything to me now. Come on, y'all. How many of you know, sometimes we activate by prayer things that can take place. And I don't know what happened. I, I pray the guy gave his heart to the Lord. But you know, eventually he, he got saved because I, I, I really, I don't want to see him end up somewhere he don't believe in. Did you get it? So prayer activates. Everybody say it with me. Prayer activates. Now listen to this. The first part of this I just don't like. I'm going to be honest with you. It says confess your faults to one another. I just don't like telling people my faults because of gossip. Everybody says, you know what the pastor told me? 
So, you know, this is something that we do struggle with, but how many of you know church should be a safe enough place to where if I got a struggle going on, I can go to another man in church and say, hey, brother, I got this struggle. Can you come in agreement with me and help me and hold me accountable? Because that's something we do lack. Come on, ladies, same thing with you. Hey, you know what? I got a problem with this, and I really need some. I know you don't struggle. Can you help me? And hold me accountable. Help me. And that means give them the opportunity to call you, check on you, check you out sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Just, just give that opportunity because this is what the Bible says, whether we like it or not. Come on, y'all. Will you say that with me? Whether you like it or not, this is what it says. Confess your faults to one another. I got this written over this. What? <laughs> but then it says do it right. And pray for one another. Not talk about one another. Don't, don't get on the prayer chain and call gossip prayer. Wow. You follow me? Pray for one another. Not gossip about one another. And this is what it says, that if you do it scripturally, you may be healed. And then it says this, and this is where I want to, that other was free. Okay, no charge on that. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman availeth much. Now listen to this in the Amplified Bible. Confess to one another, therefore, your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, or your sins. And pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. This is why we pray for one another. This is, this is the whole purpose behind this, right? Is we don't pray for people to get stoned. Either way you look at it, you, you pray for people to get healed, restored, to get their heart right, and to get their mind right. Do you follow me? But this is where we miss it at sometimes. It says the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man or woman makes tremendous power available. Everybody say that with me. Tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. So here's what we're good at. We're good at praying, but not appropriating. We'll pray the power in the place. All right, so the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman makes tremendous power available but then it needs to be sent. Then it needs to be appropriated somewhere. Come on, y'all. It needs to. It needs to have. It needs to do its purpose. This is the whole thing, you know. Now I could have prayed under my breath about that whole situation, and God may have worked that out. But I think making that declaration not only put the power in place, but then sent it to where it needed to go to do its effectual work. So sometimes this is what we do. We're we're good at praying until we feel satisfied. We get happy, but then we don't send it. We don't release that. Now, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for that going and working and the angels taking that and doing something with it, for the power of your spirit working that out in that person's life, taking the blinders off of their eyes, loose their minds so they can see. Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, sometimes I think we're guilty of praying to the point to where we feel like we've done our job, but we don't release the power to do what's necessary to do in people's lives. Um, you know, I went to lay hands on somebody one time and wasn't sure how to pray for them. Anybody ever been there? You, you just don't know. Well, how many of you know praying in the Spirit when we don't know how to pray? You know, we can pray in the Spirit, and we know we're praying the perfect will of God because we disconnect our head. Okay, our mind's unfruitful, so we pray in the Spirit to gain direction on, on what to do. All right, so sometimes, you know, I go up to people, and I do. I, I pray for them and, and just pray in the Spirit and gain instruction Sometimes I know how to pray, and sometimes the Lord says, this is what you need to pray. Pray it in the Spirit, but don't say it in public. Because how many of you know it ain't everybody's business what some people are going through? Come on, y'all. So we got to have wisdom on how to do that. And, um, you know, so I went, I went to pray for them, and, and it was just one of those things where I, I just, I could not, it, it was, <clears throat> I couldn't get it on track. So I prayed in the Spirit. And I don't know how long it was I, I prayed in the Spirit. But then uh, I ended up hitting the guy, not punching him, 
You know what I'm saying? But I just, I knocked him on the shoulders. I hit him on the shoulders. When I hit him on the shoulders, I don't know what happened. Stuff, I could see it in the spirit, just fell off of him. Just fell off. I didn't need to say anything else. Yeah, you know, he, he stumbled, you know, and the catchers were there, and I looked at him. I said, you free? Well, he ain't going to say no. <laughs> no, he was. He got free. Amen. He got free. So it's one thing to pray. Come on, y'all, give me an amen on this. Don't leave me hanging out. It's one thing to pray, but then we've got to have the actions that go with it. We need to appropriate it sometimes because there are times when you need to pray for somebody and you need to get that, uh, that effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availing much, dynamic in its power, and then you need to go and lay hands on them and release it. I mean, you really do. Well, I have to drive across town. Drive across town. I might have to meet them up at the huddle house. Huddle house will get over it and meet them. Come on, y'all. You know, sometimes we're really good at praying. Oh, I pray for you in Jesus' name. Now leave me alone. Go back to sleep. No, go and meet them. Apply what you prayed, prayed for. Get it there. It's dynamic and it's working. When you say amen, it makes tremendous power available. But then appropriate that power. Do something with it. Just don't pray it up and let it bubble. Smear it. Does that make sense? I mean, you know, release it into that person. Okay, I said enough about that. Now Let's go on. Give my request your personal attention. How many of you know, I, you know, I know when I speak to God and uh, when I tell God things that I have going on, did y'all know he already knows it? <laughs> but it's important for me to be able to communicate it. Did you know that? Did, did you know, um, I, I think I've shared this with you, Jackson needed to make some money one time. So he told me, he said, Dad, you got any work that I can do? And I said, sure. He said, um, said, well, how much will I make? I said, what do you think you're worth an hour? And he said, 10 bucks. And I said, okay. Now, I mean, you know, I knew what we were going to be doing. $10 an hour wasn't enough. Come on, y'all, it wasn't enough. And, uh, but that's what he agreed to. That was his contract. I mean, if you know, my job is to teach. And instruct. So we get out on this job, and we get about five hours into it, and he says, oh, Dad, I think this is worth more than $10 an hour. And I said, me too. <laughs> he said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to honor our verbal contract. <laughs> listen to this, guys. Now, y'all would look at me and say, you're a bad daddy. No, listen to me. Life is not going to treat him fair, because very seldom does it anybody. So he worked for that. I mean, if you know, at the end of it, I gave him a bonus. Yeah. And then I looked at him, and this is what I told him. If you don't learn your value, you'll always be taken advantage of. You got to know what you're worth. Will you say that with me? You got to know what you're worth. If not, you'll receive anything. Now, that, how many of you know, we teach and we instruct, and this is what we're supposed to do. So I know God hears me. Come on, y'all. How many of you know he already is aware of what's going on in my life? So can I ask you this stupid question? Why do I need to say it to him? If he already knows, why do I need to tell him? Well, I just need to be aware that he's a father and he listens. And a lot of times me speaking is the request. He knows what I have need of before I ever need it. Come on, y'all, he does. But me asking is how I receive. Does that make sense? I mean, that's scriptural. That's the word. You have not because you ask not. So there's an important thing there. So here we are back to communication again. The reason why, you know, we also are told to put God in remembrance of his word. Why? He's not, he don't forget it. But he still tells us to do it. But we don't do it for his benefit. We do it for ours. And we activate something whenever we do that, whenever we put him in remembrance of his word. Are y'all getting anything out of it? <laughs> okay, so let me share part of my testimony for just a minute. You know, when I, I, um, when I got saved, and I know y'all have heard this, but I walked away from friends and um, a girlfriend that I had. I walked away from everything, and I just started fresh. I had to. Does everybody follow me? And I didn't struggle with that. 
How many of you know I, I went from having all kinds of friends to getting saved and having no friends and no girlfriend? I was, I mean, I, I just, that's just the way it was. And then I shared this part of it. Then my mom got mad at me and I ended up being homeless because she kicked me out because I wasn't sharing my testimony the way she thought that I should. You know, so I was sitting, my brother took me in and I was sitting on the bed one night and my brother, he walked, he walked through, you know, he was on his way to bed and he stuck his head in the door and he said, are you about ready for a girlfriend? And I went, oh yeah. Yeah, he said, well, have you asked God for one? And I went, God, I'll be honest with you. I, I didn't even know that I could at that point in time. Come on, y'all, I didn't know I could. Seriously, and he said, well, you know, God has the right person for you, so why don't you be specific? Everybody say that with me if you can say it. You can say Pacific if you <laughs> want to. Be specific. Write down what you want. So I wrote down some things, and this is what I said. Blonde hair, blue eyes, and a couple other things. Okay, none of your business. All right? None of your business. All right? This is things I desire. You know, and, um, and I got, I started praying, and I started believing. And I got, I mean, I believe so much, guys, to where whenever I would walk through the mall and I would see a blonde-haired, blue-eyed girl come my way, I would stop and wait. And I would tell the Lord, is that her? Nope, she walked by. You know what? And I mean, that's how I was expecting. Come on, y'all. I was expecting that. You know, what I didn't expect was for God to supply it in church. I prayed. I was specific. Come on, y'all. You need to be specific. But you also need to be looking and, you know, and, and, and be aware that, you know, the enemy might lead wrong, too. All right, you got to be sensing God in this thing. So, you know, I got what I prayed for. Now, listen to this. And uh, so give my request your personal attention. Listen to Acts chapter 12, verses 5 through 8, and then 13 through 16. This is in the King James. I, for some reason, my... My uh, Bible program switched to King James, so that's what we're doing it in tonight. And I didn't want to go back and redo all the scriptures, so. so you will get the these and thous and understand that them. Okay? So, so, you know, give my request your personal attention. Listen to this in Acts chapter 12, starting in verse 5. And y if you've been in church and you know this story, but listen to this. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church. Everybody say that with me, of the church unto God for him. Do you, do you realize this? And this reminds me of where we are today. They're praying for Peter. But often when I read this, Wayne, do you ever do this? I, I read this sometimes. I wonder how they were praying. Because they thought he was going to die. I, I th they were just praying like, Lord, help him not feel the pain. You know what I'm saying? I mean, sometimes I think about this. You know, I wonder, how, how in the world are they praying? But it says they, they made prayer unto God for him. In verse 6, listen to this. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Get a picture of this, y'all. He's between two soldiers. Where does that mean he is? In the middle of them. Two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. So here, here, let me paint the picture for you. Here's Peter in the cell. Can I do it this way? In the cell, chained with two chains. Whether they're to the soldiers or not, we don't know. But he's chained with two chains. Could have been hands and feet. Or he could have been chained to the two soldiers. And here's guys outside the door with the door locked. And they're keeping the prison. So they're responsible for Peter not getting out of that jail. Come on, y'all, they're responsible for this, not ha for anything happening. And, and listen to what it says in verse 7. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up, uh, arise up quickly. And the chains fell off of his hands. Now, I think, Jess, you can't tell me God didn't have a good time picking locks. <laughs> Come on, y'all, sometimes, see, we, we think things that we... We see things that are impossible. We'll see this when we get to the end of this. We see it as impossible, and we pray that God can affect it 
But inside, sometimes we wonder if he really can. And we all do this. We do. So, so this, this is what ended up happening. Now listen to the rest of this. It says, it says um, the chains fell off from his hands, and the angel said to him, Gird thyself and bind on, the, on your sandals. So he did, and he said, Cast your garment upon thee and follow me. Now go to verse 13. Peter's outside of the prison. We know the story. Peter walked through everybody. Gates just opened. Isn't that awesome? Soldiers didn't see nothing. They paid the price, but they didn't see nothing. All right, here's Peter. He gets out in the street, and the Bible says he comes to himself. Now, how many of you know when he's walking out that prison, God had to cover him and anoint him so that he wouldn't be so nervous walking by all these guards? Can you imagine? I mean, think about this, guys. You know, but, but he comes to himself when he gets outside of the gate, and he's walking down the street, and he goes back to the house. Let, let me do it this way. He goes back to the church. Come on, will y'all say that? It goes back to that powerful church that's praying for him. Come on, y'all, and believing for him. And this is what it does. He, he says, and Peter knocked on the door of the gate, and a damsel came and, hark, and hearkened, came, came to hearken, named Rhoda. And verse 14 says, and when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness. Now, see, she wasn't unbelieving. She was excited and left him in the street. He just broke out of prison. So not, not only did God get him out, they still weren't aware. See, this is how God can do things sometimes. And, and sometimes we don't think about it. And, uh, and so she didn't open it for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. Now, verse 15, listen to this thing. I mean, listen to this stupid, listen to this church. <laughs> Forgive me, y'all. I just was making a point. And they said unto her, you're mad. This is the way the King James says, thou art mad. <laughs> but she constantly affirmed that it was even so. So they said, it's his angel. Guys, they have been praying. <laughs> And they think Peter's in heaven and going to come by and see them on the way? <laughs> I'm just pointing some things out. And um, Verse 16 says, But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. And then Peter had to pray for healing for his hand. No, it doesn't say that. <laughs> Look here, guys. When it comes to prayer, your job is to pray according to what the Word says. All right? And then God's job is to bring it to pass. Your job is to stand in faith. Your job is to stay and speak it. Know what the Word says. God's job is to bring it to pass. And how many of you know this is why we make tremendous power available when we pray? All right, but here's a church that was praying for Peter to get out of prison, and he ended, they ended up not even believing he was going to make it. I mean, think about that, guys. That, that, can you imagine? Wouldn't you, don't you think Peter just wanted to go in and headlock a couple of them? <laughs> Knowing his personality, you know? What, you were praying and not believing? Come on, y'all, it's your job to pray, and he will do it. Let's go into the next one. Listen, guys. I, you know, I try to teach you this, and, and, I, and I'm seeing it more and more in people's lives. You know, I hear the testimonies of things going on. You really need to be believing for the miraculous. You really do. I'm telling you right now, you need to be speaking some things out of your mouth by faith that God can bring to pass. You need to be doing it. Let's talk about the terms of his promise. Everybody say that with me, the terms of his promise. How many of you know, um, I had somebody say, you know, it's been, it's been going on for years, you know, people say this, God is my co-pilot. And I determined years ago, I think I'd rather have him as the pilot. Because I, you know, I don't want to take the plane down and him with me. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'd rather have him as the pilot. Let me be the co-pilot. And uh, also, you've heard this one too. You know, God said it. I believe it. 
and that settles it. Well, that's kind of right. God said it. That settles it. You're supposed to believe it. Okay, that's how faith works. All right, so a lot of times we get things a little bit backwards and everything. If you will, um, go to, go to Psalm, uh, um, Mark chapter 16, verses 14 through 20. I got it back on track in the New King James. Everybody say amen. So now that they're using the thou's, won't get thee. Okay? The terms of his promise. Mark chapter 16, verses 14 through 20. I always read this. I, I don't just do the Great Commission because I think it's important to see that Jesus had to straighten them out first. Do you understand? Because all of us, if we're not careful, we get areas in our life to where we can be unbelieving. Jesus wants us believing. He wants us believing and in faith. So listen to this. It says, Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table. And he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of hearts. So how many of you know he can't rebuke it if it didn't exist? So they had, and then, he, and then he goes on, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. Now, I don't know about you, but have you ever been rebuked? Anybody? How much fun was that? It's not fun to be rebuked, is it? It's not fun to have that happen. But I, but I, like, I like that the scripture explains how you handle it makes all the difference in the world. So he corrected them. Everybody say amen to that. He, he rebuked their unbelief, and he talked to them about their hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. Verse 15, and he said to them, go into all the world. So how many of you know unbelief and hardness of heart did not stop the power that they were about to work in? What if Jesus had a been like us and said, disqualified? We'll do it to people in a heartbeat. Well, you messed up, man. You don't get another shot. Jesus didn't function that way. Come on, y'all, smile at me real big. I'm, I'm just trying to point this out to you. He rebuked them for their unbelief. He rebuked them for the hardness of heart. We hate this word today, but it's the truth. They repented, and now they got filled. Listen to this. And, and he said, go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes, say it with me, y'all. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. And he who does not believe will be condemned. So we offer the shot. We offer the opportunity. Come on, y'all. Give me an amen here. It, it's not my job to choose for them. If I could hold them under the water until they got saved. I had this one lady one time. You know, she was the one I told you about. She had a migraine. And, um, and she wouldn't let nobody pray for her. She didn't want nobody touching her. And so I come into work one day, and she, I mean, she was in pain laying her head on the desk. And she, she was saying, it's first of the month. I can't go home. I got to get all the bills out or whenever it is. You know, I got to get all this done. I got so much to do, and I'm in so much pain. And I said, Miss Shirley, let me pray for you. No, I don't want nobody touching me. I'm believing God. I said, let me pray for you. No, just leave me alone. And she set her head on the desk. Finally, I went up, and I said, Miss Shirley, will you let me pray for you? And she said, how many of you know this is such an encouragement? She says, all right, you can put one finger right here. I could have looked at her and said, be in pain, woman, and walked out. You know what I did? I put one finger. Be it according to your faith. In the name of Jesus, you migraine, I tell you to leave her body in Jesus' name. You know, she, she sit up in the chair and went, ooh, it's gone. She was totally healed. One finger. I walked out saying, there is power. power. No, I did not. <laughs> I did not do that. And, uh, no. Yeah, really. And, uh, but she got healed. Well, then she come to me later and she said, hey, I want to be baptized. Will you baptize me? And I said, sure. I said, but you got to understand, when I baptize people, I'm, I'm going to put you under, Shirley, and put my foot on you and say, oh, that name, that wonderful name. She did end up letting me baptize her. But anyway, <laughs> I figured we'd get her saved when the bubble stopped coming up. But it, no, I'm just joking. Now listen to this. It says that he who believes, come on, y'all, and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Our job, come on, guys, our job is to present. 
We can't force anybody into it. You can't chain them in a basement until they do. Even though you think you can, you can't. It's against the law. You'll have a prison ministry. Do you understand? It, you just can't do it. You present. They accept or deny. And then their answer is on them. This is why you can't take it personal when people reject you. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting him. And that should really grieve you to pray even harder for them who rejected him and not you. Come on, y'all. It should change us, right? These signs shall follow those preachers, those evangelists, those missionaries. No, oh, it says those who what? Believe. And this, I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to have time to do this all tonight. So how many of you know part two is coming next week? But anyway, amen. So we got one more week of this, all right? Because I, I, I do have to talk. This is really important what I got to say next. Listen, he who believes, and that, that means, you know, those that, that um, everybody who is coming to the kingdom of God, it says, in my name. Everybody say those three words with me. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. Nope, we're not doing that here. <laughs> and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. I need you to pay attention to a few words, and uh, if, you, if you will, just make a mental note and do this when you get home. Look at how many times it says they, 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 they. Not him. Him, 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 him. They, 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 they. Do you understand what I'm saying? So they will, they will. So see, it's your responsibility to be the instrument and the vessel that God uses to bring these things to pass. Now, I'm, I'm not so much preaching about the, the, um, the different things that we can do, but how many of you know we are going to deal with this, with this, this little subject here over this, the rest of the night and next week in my name. Everybody say it with me, in my name. You know, it matters how you believe in that name. Did you know this? H have you ever heard anybody do this? And I'm not being sacrilegious, so don't nobody go out of here and say, I can't believe pastor did that. But if, if Jesus' name, if anybody could just say Jesus' name, and it, it did what the Bible said right here, then anybody who said, Jesus Christ, would be declaring power. But they're not. Come on, y'all. How many of you know yeah. it's how you believe yeah. on that name? Yeah. We'll get into this a little bit next week. So, see, there, there's, a lot, there's a lot of times, you know, that I do pray. And don't get mad at me for what I just did. I was just showing a point. I wasn't being blasphemous. God knows my heart on that. What I'm trying to tell you is just because somebody says the name of Jesus doesn't mean that there's power in that name that they just released. Now, how many of you know? Now, we, we know Jesus has been given a name above every name. And at his name, come on, y'all, and at that name, every knee will bow. Come on, y'all, and every tongue. So I'm not making light of the name of Jesus. What I'm trying to do is get you to the point to where, and we'll go into this next week. And let, let me just show you the direction that we're going to go so you'll be aware of it. You know, um... Matthew 7, 22 says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? We're going to deal with this one kind of heavy. Have we not cast out devils in thy name? Come on, y'all. You know, how many of you know Acts 19? We're going to hit this one pretty heavy. We just did this Sunday. Handkerchiefs and all were taken from Paul. How many of you remember this? Okay, we're taken. And there was, there was prophets in the town and tried to cast out demons using the name that Paul used. And the demon responded. Now listen to this. We'll get into this heavy next week. It's going to be interesting next week, guys. The demon responded, Jesus I know. Come on, y'all. Paul I know. But who are you? 
And the demon whipped seven of them's butt yeah. and sent them screaming to yeah. daddy. Yeah. All right, so we're going to talk about that name, and, and we'll go into this pretty heavy and, and, uh, because, you know, there's, there's a lot of people today, if we're not careful, they believe in the name of Jesus and the work that Jesus did to get them saved. Do you understand? But they never go further and believe that there's enough power in that name to set every captive free. So we're going to talk about how we believe on that name next week. Are you okay with that? Yeah. All right, so part two coming up. And I don't know. i got to go back and look how many weeks I've been preaching this thing. But it's um, been pretty good, though, right? It's been all right. One more week. Stand to your feet and let me pray for you. Thank you for joining us on Facebook. We appreciate it. Um, do this with me, guys. Would you stretch your hand toward Facebook right now, Father? In Jesus' name, I, I know Miss Ruth watches us, and there's others that watch us. And, and God, I thank you right now for help and healing flowing into households. I'm, I'm so bad at this sometimes, God. I, I just neglect Facebook and the watchers. But Father, I thank you for a release of anointing right now into them, into their houses. People who will be watching this in other countries, I know that happens too. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, minister life into them, freedom into them, healing and help, Father, by the anointing right now into them. Peace in their houses, in Jesus' name. Families responding to the gospel in Jesus' name. And I thank you for it, Father. But Father, thank you for this time that we've had together. I speak blessings on your people. And God, I thank you for your angels that are encamped around the ballast. They keep us safe. They watch over us. You're in charge of them. I'm so thankful I'm not. But you're in charge of them. I thank you they watch over every area of us. In Jesus' name, would you say amen if you agree? Give the Lord a shout of praise and you can go. Any questions, see me after service. <laughs> 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 <I d> <laughs> yeah.